Hello. 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 <laughs> Hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm um, using a different camera for this than the one I normally use. So hopefully it's making sense. Let me look at the camera. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> but I'm going to talk to the camera and not to the screen. Welcome to Leap Taken. I'll, if you get in here, hopefully um, you're not just necessarily watching this on a playback. I would love if somebody could tell me if my audio is okay. Hopefully it is. But I'm just going to go ahead. I hate that dead space at the start of a video. Mm. Stop chewing gum. Anyway, um, I just kind of want to get oh, my shirt perfectly imperfect. I got this from, do you pronounce it Sheen or Sheen? I don't know. But any, I say Sheen. <laughs> but I got this. This is a whole dress. It's just a simple like t-shirt dress. It's so comfortable. I love this. Um, especially here in Arizona where it's freaking hot. But today it's actually pretty nice. So if you didn't know, I am Mika. This is Leap Taken. Here at Leap Taken, I talk about all things witchy, craft related, law of attraction, manifesting, esoteric, and everything else in between. And um, today, I want to talk about my witchy review. So I have a couple products and a couple other things that I added in. And I'm going to talk through those um, in just a moment. But I hope everybody's having a good Saturday. Um, I know I am. <laughs> I had uh, a nice little uh, brunch. I had um, a nice little meal. It was so fancy. Avocado toast, because you know that's fancy. With um, these pink, they're called watermelon radishes. And I had um, like a salmon uh, dish with capers and dill. Oh, so good. That was my brunch. And this is honey cucumber lemonade. <laughs> it's like everything is just on point. So I'm already starting off feeling really positive, really good. Uh, so let me get into the products. I really I'm so concerned about this dang old audio. I hope it's working. It seems to be working. So I'm just going to keep going. But anyway, I'm going to start off with the odds and ends that I picked up. Um. As part of my review, so the Target dollar spot, I grabbed these. So these are candles. Um, this one is a seaside citronella. It smells good. And this is just citronella. Oop. And this is, uh, it smells like citronella, citronella candles. So I got these. These are obviously, you know, for mosquito, bug repellent, and all that sort of stuff, which is perfect, by the way. Why am I talking about one of which you review? Because I think that you can make this into something witchy. It's the same. Basically, take what the meaning is. Why do people buy these to repel? Right? Thank you, Leanna, for letting me know that you say you can hear nice and clear. I Thank you so much. I was like, oh, am I going to have to do this whole video over again? Anyway, um, yeah, but... I have, if you have someone in your life or a situation that is pesty, pesky, <laughs> and you would like um, to remove them from you and to repel them, Candle Magic using Citronella is going to be available to you. These were cheap. You know, I got $3 at the Dollar tr uh, Target spot. What do you call it? Dollar spot or something? Three bucks. But I would strongly suggest maybe looking into this um if there's a situation, if there's a person, especially if there's a person and they're bugging you, get the candles. <laughs> and um, as with anything with candle magic, you're going to want to, um, you know, put your intention into it. You want to charge your candle with your intention. Um, you're going to want to do the necessary pre-work of getting yourself grounded and um, then raising energy to put into the candle. And then, um, of course, once you light the candle, you want to stay in line with um, your intention. So if your intention was to repel the person, don't start being nice to them. You know, don't invite them over if you don't want to be bothered. 
So that was one little odd and then that I picked up. A couple other things, and this is, um, I'll be recording that video actually, uh, finishing recording today. Um, I'm setting up an altar. And I know people are really funny about sharing altars. Um, I wouldn't say you'll probably see all of it, but where I'm gonna put it is gonna be in a screen. Like I live in my house. Um, it's an open floor plan, like my kitchen's over here. Behind me is the dining area, the living area, the bar, if you can see that. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a huge workspace uh, in this room as well. And I like it that way. I like um, living in my house. I don't just, you know, you know, I just, I like it to look nice, but I want to live in it as well, if that makes sense. <laughs> anyway, so Target, I mean, uh, Dollar Tree again. I actually went over there and just got these. So I'm going to be doing a project. So this is, um, these are just artist canvas boards. They're only a dollar. They sell these at Michael's and all these other places, but these are bigger ones. But I have a project that I'm doing and I'm going to put it over in my altar space. So that's going to be awesome. I'll be using my Cricut machine and some paint and things like that. But um, the, I'll have those hung up and it's um, basically artwork that... Um, is going to be for my altar, for my ancestor altar. So I have that. In my last video, if you watched it, when I was doing the runes, my dice runes, um, I had so much trouble with my paint brushes. So I picked up some from the Dollar Tree, just some more paint brushes. These are skinnier ones. The next project, hopefully, I can use those. So those are the odds in it. So now on to the stuff that I talked about. So I'll start with the book. <sighs> Now, how could I not meet the Cottage Witch by a coloring book of shadows entitled Cottage Witch? Of course I had to buy it. So this is fairly new. This just like recent, very recently came out. So it is in, it's a real coloring book, you know, you see that. It is going by uh, like a calendar thing because it's breaking it out by months. I wasn't sure what to expect. I didn't read a lot of the description, full disclosure. I just saw Cottage Witch and I knew I had to have it. But there are things, it's a coloring book of shadows. So it's, you know, I'm trying to get to this month. It's, um, you know, it's given what it's supposed to give. There's nothing wrong with this book. I like it. I've been getting into co uh, adult coloring and stuff like that anyway. They also have um, the Sabbaths in here as well uh, for each month. I'm Where the heck is June? July. Shoot, we're in July, right? Hold on a sec. I'm trying to find July. Ah, what? Sorry. Should have bookmarked it. Come on, here we go. So here's July. Thunder Moon. Um, it's a little description here. It talks about moon energy and spell ideas. So, um, Moon baths and sea witchery, which is where I'm at right now. Even though I'm nowhere near the sea right now, and I wish I was. <laughs> kind of, I kind of do. I might have to change that. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's just a couple of blank pages. Basically over here, it's giving you a chance to write things down. Because it's your book of shadows. So, you know, and then it goes into the next month. Listen, in the beginning, they have some descriptive information like i said it, you can color it you can do what you want um you know it's it's not bad if you're looking for something like this if this is not your jam then you know you're not if you're not into coloring and all that other stuff a lot of this stuff is stuff you like i already know but that's okay how will i use this book well i'll use it as a coloring book and it just reinforces you know, my witchy ways, I might write like little details in here or something like that. Honestly, I haven't really, I don't know. <laughs> the short answer is I don't know how I'm going to use it, but it's cool. I like it. And I just wanted to add it to my, um, <laughs> my witchy library. So for that, I would say if you're just, if you're looking for something like this and you're into cottage witchery, then get it. Otherwise, I mean, did I need it? No, but did I want it? Yes. But what I did need and want is next. <laughs> so I listen, all I got this off of Amazon. It's heavy. 
I didn't even take it out the box. I just opened it because I kind of wanted to low key have like an unboxing situation. This is heavy <laughs> uh, with you guys. Mm. <laughs> wow. Okay. Out of the box. Out of the box. Uh. Put this down. You hear that? It is a cauldron. So the lid is heavy as heck. <laughs> Let's start there. <laughs> and here we go. My cauldron. I needed a new one. I was just talking about it with my coven sisters. So this is my, it's heavy. Like I'm straining. I'm not going to lie. Hey, this is heavy. So let's look inside. Well, put it down first. This is it inside. Hopefully you could see. I don't know about this camera. But anyway, it's, you know, cast iron through and through. I love this. This is going to be fun. Let me show you what I've been using. <laughs> uh, I've been using this little cauldron for years. This little teeny weeny one. And now I have this one. And I'm like holding this. It's like, wait, like this is really heavy. But I now have, I don't know, I feel like a real cauldron. Isn't that funny? I've been doing real witchcraft all this time. <laughs> but now I'm going to have the big boy. And I feel like at this part, this where I'm at my witchcraft journey, I deserve the big daddy. I deserve the big cauldron. And I love the little symbol that's on top. I put the link in the description for this so that you would know where to get this from nothing's coming off of my hands but this is really nice so let's talk about cauldron magic what are you burning in your cauldrons for me it's gonna be herbs paper um nothing edible nothing i won't be putting liquids in here or anything like that anything i do with this is strictly um well obviously it's witchcraft <laughs> it's strictly like that sort of burning burning incense burning uh, just like burning things uh, but I would not nothing that I'm going to consume um, for me there's a place for that that's kitchen magic and you can have a buy one of these if you want or buy you know cast iron skillets and make those for the whole purposes of your witchy use um, I don't have a separate pot that I use just for witchcraft enchanted things all of it because I like to I mean first of all the way I see it as a cottage witch everything in my house is on some way enchanted so i don't need to separate like that but this is different <laughs> this is different so for this yeah i'll like i said petitions herbs incense um whatever else i need to burn <laughs> whatever other kind of magic i'm working but yeah this thing is heavy it is worth the money i don't remember how much i spent for it but it's worth it <laughs> You burn incense cones, herbs, and petitions. Exactly, yeah. That's the kind of stuff that I'll burn in here, too. It was, um, it came on time, Amazon, I mean, I'm Amazon Prime. It came like it was supposed to, no issues. Um, I'm happy about it. I like this. I like this a lot. Let me pull it over so you can see. I like this a lot, actually. <laughs> I, um, I knew I needed a new one. Oh, I scratched the table. Oh, that's okay scratch and dip from ikea anyway he said same <laughs> yeah but um yeah that's pretty much of the whole but i want to kind of circle back to this this citronella and um because it is available you're going to find these because it's the summertime and that's when you're going to see these sold like this i mean three bucks each you know i really believe um a lot of us are nice a lot of us are taught to be very nice but if you're dealing with a situation of it like i said if it's a situation or a person it doesn't always have to be a person that's pest you know being like a pest in your life it, or a person it could be a situation a situation like um you know the the you know like uh let's say you're waiting you have a case or something a legal case and it's just dragging on and it's annoying because you need it to be resolved um, you can repel that negative energy around it. You know, I'm trying to just, you know, think a little bit outside the box. You could use this to repel the negative energy. Um, the um, 
entire process of it taking a long time, you know, you can repel that. Consequently, when you do spells like that, repel, you can also have a counter spell or an additional spell working at the same time. So there could be another candle that you have going or burning of your herbs where you are repelling delays, but you are inviting in uh, consistency. You're inviting in, um, you know, basically the positive. So you can have two things going at the same time. I sort of like, not sort of, I really like doing that type of work because what ends up happening is a lot of times spells, can, a lot, when I say a lot, I mean a lot of times spells can backfire because you weren't covering all the bases. Um, I joke about it, spells on spells on spells, but when you do that, you're sort of manipulating as many energies as you can. So you're dealing with the negative and you're dealing with the positive at the same time. And um, sort of what you do in between uh, while that spell is working and once it's done, that's the alignment and that's sort of that gray blank space area in between the spells. As long as you stay aligned with your purpose and your intention for what you did the spell work for, I feel like everything should pretty much work out. So I personally am going to be using um, <laughs> these for that purpose, uh, using citronella to repel a situation and a person um, uh, away from me, you know, away from me. So that's what this is about. So anyway, <laughs> just a little bit more information about that. Um, the cauldron, that's getting used almost immediately. I cannot wait to break that in. So, I mean, let's talk about breaking in a cauldron. We understand, I mean, most of us, if you're watching this, you probably understand, like if you have any magical item, how you would bless it, how you would um, basically um, cleanse, well, cleansing is easy enough, but like blessing it, attaching it to you so it, it works for you. So for me, what I'm going to do is like I do with most things, I'm just going to coat it with my energy. I raise energy. I think about its purpose. I see me using it. I use, um, you know, vision work. I see myself using it. I see, uh, you know, spells working, whatever that looks like. Like it's more of a feeling. And I just see that in my mind's eye. And I then just picture whatever that imagery is, whatever that feeling is, I assign it like a color. So it could be a white light. It could just uh, be black energy. Sometimes I've even f seen like it was like um, smoke. <laughs> Basically, I now, you know, give it a form and a color. This, you know, scent, uh, visions, feelings, emotions. And I see it running from my mind's eye through my body, out through my hands, and I'll be holding the object. And that's how I put my intention and that's how I put my energy into the fit the object itself i'll hold it like this it's been years so far so good <laughs> but yes cleansing i'll do like a sage thing and i'll speak over it and welcome it yes the, the object i'll welcome it to my workspace and into uh, my space and um you know kind of christen it making it mine so that's what i do with that in a situation like this um I don't really do it like a book blessing, but I might go ahead and try to do that. I might be open to it. Over the summer, like um, I've been doing some training for one of the um, uh, job, well, yeah, a job that I'm, I've been doing. <laughs> um, I've been training on it. And in between training, I realized that my mind wanders. I am not how I used to be when I was a student, when I was learning things. I have to be occupying like my hands or something while I'm listening to people. So coloring books are helpful. So I was um, actually I was using a coloring book that I talked about on a recent witchy review it was about um, hair. I got it from five below, but I'm looking forward to using this also uh, during those training sessions because it's not so much. I, I, it's not about boredom per se. It's more like. I'm discovering as I get older, I guess just because we all have access to more technology and things like that, we're used to doing multiple things at once. So me just sitting and listening and not doing anything, my mom, like I said, I kind of check out. So coloring helps bring my energy and focus 
to a point where I can actually pay attention and retain it. Uh, so the Princess Diary says, I have the planner by the same author. There's a planner. <laughs> you already know. Um, now I got to look for that. There's a planner too, but this app, you know what? I could, um, <clears throat> excuse me, use this almost kind of like a planner. If I did like bullet planning, because I mean, it's a couple pages, but like if I, I mean, I could kind of set it up like that. Now that I'm looking at it like July. So this is the first page of July. I'm going to go look for that planner as soon as I'm done with this. So you get, wait, huh? you just get one blank page? No. Okay. No. All right. So this is the next page. So I got this blank page and then this verbiage here. And then you have two blank pages. So I guess if I was to like use this kind of almost like, um, I don't know what my cottage witch calendar, I could like, um, I mean, I have a lot of stickers. I have like number stickers. I could use this like a bullet journal situation. I mean, I could technically do that. Uh, yeah, girl, there's a magic plan, magic planner and a tarot planner. Both are coloring books. <sighs> okay. All right, we'll say less. Well, you can say more actually because I like hearing it. I am going to go look for this. So the author, by the way, is Amy Cesari. So yeah. Hi, Rosemary Luna. Thank you for coming. Thank you all for coming, by the way. I really appreciate it. I like doing it on Saturday. It's just, um, yeah, it's kind of, it's more chill. I don't know. <laughs> I've already, I've because I've changed my schedule, I'm up early doing this training stuff I was talking about. So I'm like up very early. I'm up in a five o'clock hour of my time now, um, which is weird to consistently do that. Um, but I'm doing it. <laughs> And um, I slept in today, so that was fun. And then I, you know, I just went about, had my brunch, went to the store, and started picking some stuff up, start thinking about some projects that I'm going to do. <laughs> this is one of them, and this, you guys are giving me ideas. But now I'm going to go look um, back over on Amazon <laughs> and see about the planner and the tarot planner, because now I got to know. Um, I've got to see. I got to get my hands on it. And I'm liking the coloring. You know what? The coloring makes me feel like I'm doing a little bit of bullet journaling, just a little bit. And that was never um, easy for me. Uh, bullet journaling, it's, um, that's, you know, when you watch videos, it looks so simple. But like, you've got to have it all up here and then put it down. For me, it's, um, it's hard not to just copy somebody else's stuff <laughs> because it's, I don't know. It doesn't come natural to everybody. Me and the stickers and stuff like that, that I could work with. But once you start talking about like from scratch, the planner stuff, I don't know, that's hard. It feels hard. I have gotten a blank notebook and sat down and it was like, okay, I don't know how to do this. Now here's something interesting. I'm looking at January, right? They have more pages for January. So there's the cover. There's the little verbiage on the side and a blank page. It's a tarot journal coloring book, not a planner. Oh, okay. I was getting excited. <laughs> then you have more blank pages. Then more blank pages. Then it goes another blank page and then February. But um, why was July so short? What they figure I'm not going to write as much because it's in July. They don't know me. Hi, kid. <laughs> Unless I just skipped it. Yeah, so... Oh, no, I did skip it. I'm sorry. I was like, why is it short in July? It's not. Oh, then I really could make this into something. Maybe this will be my attempt um, at doing some sort of bullet journaling. But, you know, I realize there's lines on the page and other stuff, but I could just work in this space. I don't know. We'll see. I'm excited. I'm right now. Um, but she does have color, a coloring book planner, too. I will look into that. Sir. If you, well, you already know I'm going to look into that. Um. I like it. Like, I'm in that mood right now. For me, it feels very much like when you're a kid. And I don't know if you had the kind of uh, mom who would get the workbooks to keep, make sure you were, um, you know, retaining information and you didn't start school and lose everything. So my mom would get me all these workbooks. No, I didn't always finish the workbooks. I had good intentions because I wanted to be smart too. 
<laughs> um, yeah, she used to get me these, you know, for like reading and things like that. So for me, it's like the witchy version of it. So you said uh, the book you have is the same art from her yearly planners. It's the same book without the calendar spreads and weekly spreads. Well, if that's the case, then maybe I'll just make this into something. That'll be fun. I can make like a little calendar on here and make this into something really fun. Thank you. Um, yeah. I kind of like the idea of doing that. That'll have me maybe, you know, try, try my hand a little bit more. I am, you know, I struggle because I really, I want to be able to draw more. I have um, been playing around with making things and I just, I, is it a skill or is it a talent? Because I feel like it is a skill and I should be able to learn it. I don't have to be the best, but I got to figure something out because I have this desire to like draw imagery and things like that it doesn't it's not about always selling something but i just like to draw things or try to draw things and i just i don't i think it's just i guess i gotta just learn maybe i need a teacher i keep saying i'm gonna sign up for like a skillshare class or something like that where um they teach you how to draw like basic drawing i don't know if i can get like a workbook or something i've seen in craft stores they have books you know like this and they teach you how to draw things but I, you know what maybe I should try it instead of knocking it I don't know but I need help <laughs> I need help um, because the things I draw look silly if you watch that runes video you saw what happened it was not good I was looking to see if I had one of the old ones around but I enjoy but here's the thing even though it looks like a little kid <laughs> preschooler just drew something it's fun and isn't that the point it makes me uh feel good when i create things and um when i get into the paints and i play with them i mean come on i went and i brought more brushes because even though it doesn't look as pretty as it looks in my head you know try starting with kids tutorials i can do that like this little project here um yeah this is gonna be um I'm going to have like imagery and, um, um, you know, actual wording and things like that on these canvases. And I'm going to put them over near my Walter, so altar, excuse me, where I'm setting it up. Um, and they're going to be representative of basically whatever imagery or um, messages um, that I feel like my ancestors want me to, to display or what I feel you know, intuitively is the right thing. So I don't have it all figured out yet. I just knew to buy these canvases and to get it set up, but I'm gonna be starting that this um, weekend and I'll be filming uh, some of it, so yeah. But I will look at um, kids tutorials because I don't know, and, and my mom knows how to draw. It's like she's, when she was younger, it came natural. My daughter knows how to draw. Um, I have gotten um, back in touch with my my father. I didn't grow up having my father around. And for the past couple of years, he and I have been connecting, reconnecting. So uh, I know that my sister that he had with his his wife, um, she knows how, well, she's not just doesn't know how to draw. She's an artist, <laughs> that's her career. So, and I think like one of her kids knows, I don't know, basically there's artists and there's people who are really good at this stuff, but for some reason it's a struggle for me, so I don't know. But then again, I meet my son, we're, we're stick figure people, we know how to draw stick figures. And he's been like that since he was a little kid. He had coloring books, he had drawing books, you know, as a kid, but what are you gonna do? All right, so yeah, those are the things for the review. Um, repel, 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 burn, <laughs> and um, play. <laughs> That's sort of the theme. <laughs> You've probably got some talent too. I want to. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna bring it out. I think it's in me. I just, I need uh, the skills. I need to learn how to bring it out. You know, I, I have a desire to do this. I did a. Um, what do you call one of those classes where uh, the wine and sip, or, um, paint and sip classes? I, I did that and that was so fun. 
And I liked what I made, you know, so I had a lot of fun doing that. Uh, the more you do, the better you get. Yup, that's why I got the canvases and I'm just um, gonna, you know, it's gonna be like a mixed media type situation. I, I'm pretty sure on, on some of the canvases, it won't just be like painting and things like that. Uh, but yeah, practice makes perfect or close to it. Or as my shirt says, perfectly imperfect. <laughs> that That's me right now. And I'm really embracing that. Um, it's funny because as you get older, you have, I mean, I guess you have a choice. But for me, as I go into this phase of my life, fully in my witchiness, <laughs> I can't help but, I don't know, embrace this sort of stuff. I was, when I was out to eat earlier, the waitress saw my phone case. <laughs> you see this, right? So she saw my phone case and she says to me, Oh, that's such a cute phone case. And I said, oh, thank you, because I think it's a cute phone case, too. I got it off of Amazon, if you're interested, by the way. And I said, thank you. And she's like, yeah, yeah, you could have fun stuff like that at all ages. So I was looking down at my menu, and when she said, I just looked up at her, and I said, yeah, you can. And she looked away. I'm like, what is wrong with people? Like, I'm sitting here. I'm finally, I've been dying to go back to this place. Um... I was by myself because I wanted to have a nice uh, time sitting by myself. I had some things set up that I was working on. And uh, I was minding my business just having a good time. And she said that. And I kind of hurt my feelings a little bit because I'm like, thanks. <laughs> I think the wine and sip are successful. It was so successful because you're more relaxed going in and not too hard on yourself. Yes, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Because um, usually you like, pre-drink a little bit because you're waiting so you have a little something to drink ahead of time I agree yes yeah, she did try it and I, here's the thing I don't think she was being mean but you were still being ignorant because you should know better you don't say that to people it's it's like saying oh you look so nice for your age <laughs> you know like what? I didn't even think I was that old I mean not that there's a that old I wouldn't say that to somebody who could be 80 I would never say that oh it's no matter what age you are, you should be able to have fun. I would just say that's nice. <sighs> Which goes into another discussion on ageism and all that sort of stuff. And as practicing witches, it gets very interesting um, in the social media world. But I've talked about this before because I kind of feel like the platforms, the social media platforms, definitely people tend to embrace the younger folk. I, I am saying that. I mean, it just is what it is. And un because you are younger and just because you just haven't uh, been on this planet so that long, you could be knowledgeable, yes. But at the same time, if someone like myself and others who have been practicing witchcraft for a lot longer and they, and they you know, are giving you information, I'm not saying that the younger people can't give information i'm just saying you're getting a more broader conversation um uh with someone who's been doing this longer and that, that i mean that's just facts right of course someone younger they might have a fresh approach they could um you know it's newer to them there's a more excitement added element and all that sort of stuff but because of that I do see that sometimes, because I look at YouTube like everybody else, and I look, see some channels, witchy channels, where um, I'm, I'm, it's like I, I don't say, I'm not going to go any comments and, and be someone's troll, but it's like you almost want to say, well, what, you, I don't think you know what you're talking about, but I don't, you know, I would never do that. But I don't think a lot of these people really know what the heck they're talking about. And that's not even just YouTube, Instagram, and there's TikTok. Witch talk on TikTok is a very interesting place. The things that, um, in one minute, the things that people are saying that is just backwards and wrong and really got people who were new to the craft or just open to this crazy information or just wrong information. I don't know. What are you going to do? I just do my little space in the corner. <laughs> of YouTube and, a little, and on Instagram and I just, you know, do my thing. Hopefully you guys resonate with me. Um, but that's that. And the only other thing that I was kind of interested in talking about, which goes into 
the age thing is if you've been paying attention um wendy williams okay if you guys know who tabitha is she is a social media influencer basically i know she's also an actress um beautiful spirit uh more christian focused um and the vegan so i was watching especially during the quarantine i fell in love with tabitha you know i love her channel on youtube and i've watched a lot of her instagram content and it's very inspirational okay oh you said the younger witch channels don't have enough substance for me beyond witchcraft 101 i didn't learn anything deep exactly exactly um the other thing i notice is like people are showing you how to do things but they're not adding the spiritual uh component so you watched me make a candle from scratch you know or and you watch me put the oils on i do all that but you don't you know, it's beautiful imagery, the camera, the lighting, all that's beautiful to look at. But how is it magic? <laughs> you know, um, and I love to see, by the way, just aesthetically, I do like to watch some of those types of channels. There's a couple in particular, I think they refer to themselves like as green witches. And I, I like to see the imagery and it can spark ideas in me. But in no way am I seeing any magic. I don't see this spiritual part i don't see any of that it's just you're you're doing arts and crafts which is cool you know maybe they're not giving it all away on camera i don't know but you should say that like i'll say that if i do some things i'll let you know hey afterwards i'm gonna do a cleansing or i'm gonna you know bless this object or whatever it is um after the fact uh to let you know hey there's still a couple more steps so if you followed along with me if you watch this video and you were doing the same thing please know there's more to it there's another spiritual component that i'm maybe not just showing you but about the tabitha thing the reason i'm thinking about uh ageism and wisdom and knowledge when you're in the crone phase is wendy williams um who we know what wendy williams does we know she's been doing it for years um i come from jersey so I'm very familiar with her. She uh, had some time in Philly where she was on the radio and I lived in Connecticut, New York. So basically I've heard her all this time. And then when she got her TV show, I felt good for her because I've, I've always known her. So she's always been a gossip person. That's, that's her job. She's, you know, that's what she does. Um, so Tabitha, the social media influencer, you know, she lays the whole Christian shtick real heavy, by the way. Uh, but that's her day. That's her her deal. That's what she does. She talked about retiring her husband. I watched the video where she said she had a big big news. It was a blessing. All this sort of stuff. People in her comments are congratulating her. She did well financially. She could retire her husband. That they had a deal. He was supposed to work for five years. It turned into fifteen years. And. Uh, I didn't know until that video that he worked for LAPD. So that's kind of a big deal. So um, that he didn't have to do that anymore. So for 15 years, he worked LAPD so she could pursue her dreams. Awesome. So she just kept talking about retiring him. Now, where you stand on this is you. Me, full disclosure, if you know anything about this, I don't think what Miss Wendy Williams said was wrong. I do believe there are men listen there's exceptions to everything but by and large me being almost i'm approaching 50 years old i have yet to see in my personal experience and all the other women that i've come across where it works out really well when your husband doesn't either have his own money coming in or he feels like he's doing, um, I guess, the um, traditional, you know, providing and uh, protecting and all that sort of stuff. And how that looks for everybody's household and situation, that should be, as she say, that's your business. Uh, but Wendy Williams was speaking from, to me, an elder's place. Wendy Williams is in her late 60s at this point, I'm pretty sure. She was speaking from an elder's place who we've all seen, if you just a little bit understand, she had been married for some years to this man. He embarrassed her, um, you know, 
publicly cheating and all that sort of stuff. But basically, he he was living off of her. You know, she she had the money. She could retire him. And she referred to other people, Mary J. Blige, um, who definitely talks about this. Jill Scott tried this as well. Um, Halle Berry tried this. And unfortunately, it, it did not work out. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because I kind of feel like there's a, the amount of disrespect to Wendy Williams because people say, well, it was her delivery. It's the way she said it. Y'all, we got to get a little bit more comfortable <laughs> with sometimes how, um, excuse me, your elders speak to you. I say that because there's a girl who grew up in Jersey um, who still doesn't know how to not talk with her hands. And, uh, you know, who has lived a little bit of life, you know, I have some wisdom I can share. But if, <coughs> excuse me, if I see you going down a path, if I see you about to go down a, a, a painful journey and I see it, you know, I'm going to say something to you. Now you can go get, you know, I think somebody said, Wendy said, um, I heard what Wendy Williams said. She said something to the, and I don't watch the show. I just saw the clip. Um, Cause she's gotten a little too much for me, a little toxic, more toxic over the years. And she's out of touch, but no, nobody want to talk about that. Uh, but this one, she was on uh, what they say. A broken clock is right twice a day. She said, I'll give this marriage, you know, whatever period of time before it starts to unravel. So I'm paraphrasing what she said. Now I don't like to speak ill over, <coughs> excuse me, anybody's marriage, their situation, all right, I'll give you that. She didn't need to say that extra part, but that's part of her thing. She's going to take get her digs in. Unfortunately, people listen to her show. They want to hear the messy, her talk messy about people. But the message wasn't necessarily wrong. And again, it's not so much about gossiping about all this sort of stuff. For me, it's more about people's reaction to an elder they just it's like okay so you don't you may not understand or agree because it hasn't happened to you and then and then the other part um and i personally know people who believe this that because i teased about the christian shtick that tabitha has that she lays on real real thick and that has everything to do with why people believe that for some reason uh, Tabitha is going to be the exception because, you know, she can quote, uh, quote scripture and, you know, she's the prayer whisperer that therefore she's going to be able to, you know, beat the odds. And that won't be her situation because they put God, as she said, Tabitha said, I'm not mocking this woman. She said they put God first. Now, meanwhile, we have stories of pastors, pastors who are married and they're dealing with situations and mess and all that sort of stuff. Did they not put God first? Look, I'm just going to say this about that. <laughs> if you have watched any of Tabitha's videos, and I have because, like I said, through quarantine, I found this woman to be very inspirational, and I was digging her vibe. But when her husband is involved, I'm sorry. If I'm a woman of a certain age, and I'm not, you know, it's, I'm not looking for anything. You know, I, I'm married. You, you know, I'm not like... <laughs> looking to hate on this woman or her situation i'm not looking for anything i'm just looking at the content but i could not help but see the energy that this dude is giving off and on their vacation pictures and stuff like that this is before wendy williams i was already thinking oh i hope that this works out for them because the more success and fame that she builds unfortunately it's just realistically a lot of men can't handle that uh, especially as you get more famous because, you know, your her handlers, the people who handle her, they tend to push you to the side and let her shine. And a lot of guys can't handle that. It's like, why are we in bizarre world where people, people just can't admit that? We don't have a lot of successful examples of that happening. Again, it does, it can happen. We all know there are some exceptions. But typically it, it doesn't look like that unfortunately we see that all the times with uh celebrities and it's really sad that you know it's like that so with that knowledge and wendy's personal experience she spoke on it and i again it just lets you know in society whether you're a sage witch <laughs> a crone witch um or a muggle <laughs> you know if you have a certain age it's almost like one, I know for a fact, as I'm getting older, you're ignored 
mocked or, you know, for some reason, people just don't want to seem to, to hear what you have to say. He said, when a man feels emasculated, shit switches up. They cheat to soothe their egos. Exactly. This is a very common thing that plays out. Like this is, this unfortunately happens more than the other side where, you know, he's supportive and he's, you know, is this on outwardly, he may seem some guys can kind of keep the dance up in both worlds a little bit longer than others. Some people are messier. Some people, you know, so from the outside looking in, it looks like, oh no, he's completely supportive, but he has a whole other life over here and he's just not telling you. Pro you know who I think about? Halle Berry and Eric Benet. It's freaking Halle Berry, beautiful woman, but her career and her money was up here. Yes, he's we know who uh, Eric Benet, or you, maybe you do or you don't, <laughs> but the point is um, she was doing her thing. She was shooting a movie. She was doing what he, she was always going to do because that's what she does. But you know what? He And I've heard him myself in interviews. Basically, he took ownership of the situation, but he still wanted her money. Uh, Mary J. Blige, same situation. Somebody pointed out, but those guys... Um, like Mary's situation, uh, you know, the, her husband was her manager. So that's the thing. It's like, it doesn't matter about that. If if they feel it's like this and, and they're, the guy's not up here, a lot of men just, they struggle. Like you, like uh, the Princess Dyer said, when a man feels emasculated, shit switches off. This is just facts. And I know we want to believe it's not like that. And fun fact, because I have millennials, <laughs> Just because people say, well, the millennial men are more softer. They don't do that. Let me tell you, on the surface, but over time, them too. Yes, that, that, those, those guys too. Also, there's, I don't know if it's just a natural bio, biological thing, if it's part of the influence of society, a combination of both. But that's really how it plays out. Again, if you are living in a situation where you, the woman or the breadwinner, you're making most of the money and you got a great relationship, great. You might be the exception. But when it, we're talking about a larger amount of money and then add fame on top of it. So money and fame, a lot of men get a little weird. Um, but again, back to why I brought this up. I don't like the disrespectfulness toward Wendy Williams and her advice written off as bitter. I don't like that at all. And I, I'm i using this as an example, but I've been seeing this across the board, which ties into what I'm talking about on in social media with the younger witches. Um, I, I hear things like, I am not my ancestors. Okay, wow. <laughs> they say that as if, you know, whatever my ancestors endured i'm not willing to do that and i see it as <laughs> you were never tested to the degree that your ancestors were so you don't really know what you you can think about what you would do in that situation but you really don't know and um i instead have respect for my ancestors who put their survival and their children's and their loved one's survival over everything because that's really what was happening uh as opposed to assuming they were docile and just accepted the atrocities and trauma and things that happen um this is why critical race theory yeah i'm all over the place this is why critical race theory is important because i think um we keep talking about it maybe for white kids to understand, but I think black kids also need critical race theory uh, as well. I think several adults do too, black and white. Um, yeah, but this situation of just, you know, you're just, you're just as a woman specifically, uh, you're bitter. You're just bitter if you speak on the past experiences that you've lived through, <laughs> like your girl, your good girlfriends of your same age and you watch your mother go through and it's just crazy to me that it's like so you just did because you don't like how she said it um i don't know sometimes i mean listen there are a lot of things my, the way my mother bill cosby prime example 
uh, that was, you know, in the news with him coming out, which by the way, I am, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. I, I, I just, I just feel bad for, for anybody. I'm always going to side with the victims. Let me just say that. Uh, but I was having a conversation with my mother who is in that book. She's a boomer. And she was, <laughs> you know, she was like, yeah, like she has sympathy for the, the people that he supposedly, her words, um, you know, assaulted and victimized. Uh, but there's just like a different mindset and vibe with like boomers and things like that. So I can understand as a millennial myself, no one talks about my generation. I'm a Gen X. We're the forgotten folk. People just like, skip over us. But <laughs> a lot of millennials, um, they look at boomers and they're like, oh, they just, they're out of touch. Where I get it, I guess, because I'm closer to them. I get why my mom and her generation are more like skeptical of, um, I guess somebody like Bill Cosby getting in trouble. They don't believe the the victims. They don't, not most, eh, you might, one might be telling the truth. They don't believe all of them are telling the truth. Um, there's a reason for that. It's their lived experiences where specifically if you're a black man and you're being accused of these things and some of the uh, victims of the uh, his uh, sexual assault were white women i think majority of them were so yeah they're looking at that situation with a different lens than the rest of us now I'm not, it's not a right or wrong but for me i understand where her and you know the rest of the boomers who think like that i know what's driving it i know that thought process and i'm not condemning them because their lived experiences put them in a, in a mindset where that's just how they think. They, I, I, you know, it's how do you turn that off? On the flip side, as Gen X, uh, a lot of us grew up as latchkey kids alone. We're much more independent. Um, where it, the funny thing about it is, you know, those millennial uh, people like in their 20s, because people don't understand what millennial is. I think it's like, Right now, you're a millennial. I think if you're like up to age 30, 39 or something like that and down, you're technically a millennial or like about 37, somewhere in around that range. Um, but, uh, you know, those my my kids are in their 20s. They're still considered millennials. Uh, then there's Gen Z. I don't want to get into this whole thing, but the point is um, we were raised more independent. Um some of us are more open to therapy and you know um i think honestly even witchcraft and things like that our my generation more so than obviously more of the boomers the millennials definitely but there's if you notice um i see it with my kids and their friends are they independent yes but not like how we were but then again i never put them in the situation my kids to be in that situation so maybe that's why but um but i can have respect for this entire generation of millennials now, because I understand where their their experiences that they've lived up until now, or what drives their ways, why they see certain things. They're they're sick of what they saw the boomers do and the way they turn their nose up and the way they feel like they ruin the planet and you know capitalism, the economy, and all that sort of stuff. You know they had unions and pensions and all that sort of stuff. And, um, you know, you're working as a millennial and you'll probably never be able to buy a freaking house. I'm in Arizona and they said the median price tag for a house is like $400,000. So come on, that's crazy. Like how, how, you know, you make a job and you start 50 grand, you start at 60 grand, you're paying student loan debt, all that sort of stuff. And there's this out of touchness that boomers have where they think you still could just work over the summer. I know that because I actually hear people saying this. They really think you can get a summer job and pay for college. But anyway, I digress. I'm willing to be open minded and understand what drives uh, collectively why people think the way they think as opposed to just getting offended. So with that being said, when I see the situation play out with Tabitha and Wendy, I know why people who think Tabitha's um, untouchable, a lot of that has to do with the Christianity piece, because you want to believe that people who are real believers like that, those types of things don't happen to them, but pay attention to the husband. She talking all that Christian shtick. I don't be hearing him say that. <laughs> she say that. 
I have not heard this man say all that stuff in those videos. And I have watched her stuff, but I digress. So with that, when I hear Wendy, who that's clearly not her thing, but she's just talking about her lived experiences, don't immediately discount it because you don't like the way she's saying it. She's an elder, you know? Maybe just listen a little bit. You know, that that's all I'm saying. And as a witch uh, who is getting older and, you know, I'm sharing my knowledge and, you know, my experiences, um, I think I would be very offended if somebody or groups of people were just like, oh, you're just immediately wrong. It was the way you said it. We, I, everything can't be sugarcoated. Especially a situation like this. Sometimes you need, you know, in your face talk, at least where I come from. I don't know. Maybe it has, it's a regional thing. New Jersey, New York, maybe we're more like that. And Tabitha's from the South where they have perfected that nice, nasty thing. I lived in the South for years, and that's the thing. Where me, I'm a bull in the China shop. I'm just going to say it out loud. I'm just going to be very blunt and just say what I have to say. I don't like passive aggressive stuff. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't have time for it. I don't want to do nice, nasty I'm going to call you out on that. So maybe that's why I kind of understand more where Wendy come, comes from. By the way, I'm really not a fan of Wendy Williams. I should probably state that at this point. She has said some things where it's like, ma'am, no, go sit down somewhere. Just go retire. You know, I've, I've seriously thought that. But she's she she right about this one. Sorry. Uh, I think she's right about it. And I hope that Tabitha doesn't <laughs> regret um making that big announcement uh years from now i really hope i want this woman to be the exception because i genuinely like her spirit and i like what she's trying to do does she lay the christian thing on a little too thick for my taste yes is she embracing looking like a grandma before her time yes uh is her husband fine <laughs> and i don't understand why she's wearing these big old lady glasses and moo moos and stuff like this walking around with your um you know she gonna call her donna you know, why are you embracing this look? Well, I get why, because, you know, people want to see it. They pay to see it. That's what they like. Uh, but you got to be careful with that type of situation. But again, as someone of a certain age, I see it. I see that. And I understand those are like red flags to me, but that's enough about that. But anyway, yeah, respect your witch, elder witches is what this whole thing was about. <laughs> respect elder witches. Some of us may not say it smooth. We may not, um, we might be a little too blunt. Uh, but there's some knowledge there. Now on the flip side, which is a whole other conversation, I was gonna, um, that's actually gonna be a video I'm gonna talk about. When working with elders who were just way off, they did not gain life lessons, not enough to share. Um, you have some people walking around who just walk through life with blinders on they did not, they just, they were numb most of their life and they just didn't get the lesson. So it's going to be very difficult for them to share knowledge um, if they're not willing to have ever done any self-analysis or uh, a breakdown of themselves or anything like that, especially on a spiritual level. So it's going to be hard to get knowledge from those type of elders, but typically those are not the ones speaking up. They're usually quiet. So that's how you can sort of distinguish that. Um, but that's all on that subject. So yeah, that's pretty much all I got. So look for videos <laughs> where I'll be using uh, my cauldron. Um, that's gonna be, be, yeah, that's gonna be a staple on my um, craft space and my uh, altar setup video. So look forward to that. That'll be coming in about a week or so. Um, I'll have that posted and of course other fun content um, as well and a little bit more dialogue conversation um, specifically like I said about like elder witches and things like that and um, sort of holding space for them which will translate to how are you approaching your ancestors um, and communication with them you know are you looking at it as a parenting type relationship are you looking you know have how are you looking at those dynamics? You know, what that kind of matters because sometimes, which I'll get into more on a deeper level, I think people are creating this relationship in their mind 
yes, me, the witch, saying this, in their mind, of this parent-type relationship with elders where you've you're going to get in trouble if you don't follow what they say. You're, they're going to punish you, you know, like a kid getting put on punishment or grounded because uh, you didn't follow their advice, that sort of stuff. And um, I don't think that's a very good attitude to take with ancestors. You can do whatever you want. But to have a successful relationship where you're honoring, revering them, communicating with them, and energetically they're working with you as well, I don't think it needs to be that type of relationship. It doesn't mean they're not really working with ancestors, uh, people who do this, or that they're not um, benefiting from that experience. Uh, however, long term, I don't think that's a sustainable approach um, to take with ancestor reverence. So I'm, I'm going to have a video where I'm breaking that down a little bit more. Um, the sort of pitfalls to having that sort of dynamic with um, ancestors and, and before you become ancestors elders because it kind of starts there but that's just a little hint for some videos to come but anyway uh, I'm gonna end it here I hope everybody has a really positive happy weekend um, I don't have too much going on but I like that I'm a homebody anyway I'll be doing lots of crafting um, setting up my altar shooting some of those videos and <laughs> having fun in my cottage which coloring book of shadows grimoire and book of spells yes and then um looking for that coloring book planner because now i gotta see that and get a hold of that but if the artwork is the same i might just stick with this and play with this because this looks come on this is fun look at this this is fun so i'm gonna play with this for a little bit over the weekend break in my cauldron and all that sort of stuff oh and uh do some repelling spell work some very necessary repelling spell work as well um i might shoot that too <laughs> all right so thanks guys for watching and uh coming with me on saturday i really appreciate it um more to come next saturday um pretty sure that's like a haul i don't know i marked it down um so that'll be really fun thank you enjoy your weekend too all right so i'm out of here um I think I'm going to switch from lemonade to something a little different. Loosen up and do some more crafts. <laughs> All right. So thanks again. I'm Mika. This is Leap Taken. Please like, subscribe, share, um, comment, all that sort of stuff. And bye. <laughs> See you guys.